I'm going to tie another wet fly today. This is the Kingfisher, also in Ray Bergman's book, Trout. I chose this for a couple of reasons. It's just a simple little uh, wet fly. I think it's rather elegant. The hackle on this in the book, the hackle is shown as being tied in as a throat. I decided to do this one as a collar for a couple of different reasons. I've had some people ask me about doing collars instead of throats. I wanted to do this one as a collar, partly because of the particular hackles that I'm using, which I'll talk about in the video, but also because I wanted to elaborate on the easiest way that I found to apply these collars and secure those down to get a nice looking little fly. So that's the Kingfisher. I'll go ahead and get started time. So I'm going to start the Kingfisher by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad 33.99 in a size 6. I'll debar the hook. I'm going to start with a white thread because I have a red floss body on this. This is a Danville 6 aught in white. I'm going to start my thread about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to advance this down to just past the point of the hook. There is a tip on the Kingfisher. I'm using a Danville's uh, Mylar tinsel. This is a silver and gold Mylar tinsel in a size 14 labels off of it, but that's what I'm using for the tip as well as the rib. This is a little bit larger hook, so I'll go with the larger tinsel. I'm going to tie this in with the silver side up. Advance down the hook shank about four wraps. Back up one. I generally like the tip to begin right just past the point of the hook. That's just me. Put four wraps down and then four wraps back up. And that will put me just past the point of the hook. Tail on the Kingfisher is some golden pheasant. Tip it. Here I'm just going to select a feather. I like the the um, broader feathers simply because the barbs on these are a little bit longer. They're easier to work with for tailing. I'll peel off the barbs that I don't need on that. And then I'll clip out. I generally go with about a dozen to 15 barbs like that. I like to roll those together so that the darker side of those is out a little bit more. I think it's just more colorful. I'm going to tie that in so it's about a shank length long. Trim away the excess. I want that the length of the body. The body is. Oh, as I mentioned, the rib, I got to tie in. This is the same number 14 silver gold mylar tinsel. And then the body. The body, I'm using a Danville's four strand rayon floss in red. 
I'm use all four strands on this size six hook. I'm going to attach that in so that the ends are just the length of the body. And then I will wrap this all in. I want to make certain I have this wrapped all the way down right to the beginning of that tip. I don't want any thread wraps showing right through here when that floss starts to get wrapped on. I'll wrap all this down to make a smooth underbody. I'll apply the floss for the body and the rib in five even spaced wraps. And then we will get to the wing and the hackle. With my body in, I'll now change over to a black thread to finish the fly out. I'm using a Danville. This is again a 6 aught Danville in black. Get a little bit of wax on my thread. Bring the black all the way back to the back of the head space here, and I'll tie in my wing. The wing on the Kingfisher is a mallard flank. I'm just going to take a nice, fairly even feather here that's fairly full. And I'm going to clip out the center portion like this, and then I'll fold those together to make the wing. I want the tips to go about halfway down the tail. A few wraps to secure that and we can take a look. That's turned out pretty good. I'll trim away the excess. Now, part of the trick of putting in a hackle as a collar instead of a throat here is you have to have a nice smooth base to wrap that in. So, you know, it looks like I've almost finished the whole fly because I just wrapped all this down, smoothed it off. Actually, it looks like I made the head to the fly. In a, a certain sense, I guess I did, but I have a nice smooth area here now to wrap that hackle in to make the collar. 
and that's going to make all the difference. For the collar, I'm using this is a neck that I've got here. It's kind of a badger neck. The interesting thing is the centers of these aren't fully black, so it's not like a true badger hackle. I'm going to select a fairly full feather. I want one where the barbs, which the ones closer to the end of it, the bottom of it here, these are going to be the ones, the longest ones. And I want those to be about from the eye of the hook to the point of the hook. Isolate the tip of that, trim away the excess, and I'll just tie in that tip right here on the side. Now, when you are smoothing this out, just be cautious because you don't want to make it too big. It's very easy to just put in a few more wraps, get a little bit smoother, a little bit smoother. You're going to put in a few more as you isolate, I should say, as you secure the tip of that hackle. So you don't want to make that too big. Once that's secured, I'm going to leave my thread right here behind the eye of the hook. Grab my hackle pliers. Now I'm going to wrap in that collar. I'm going to fold some of these back. It just helps in the process that you don't get a lot pointing forward and trapped. I'm only going to get three to four wraps, maybe, of this. I don't want it too full. See, by having that nice, smooth area, I can get these wrapped one wrap right in front of the other, and they just go in nice and smooth. The rachis isn't uh, popping off or dropping down anywhere. Back this one up just a little bit. Down a little closer. There we go. Some of those barbs pulled back. You're going to end up with your last wrap coming right up here behind the eye of the hook, right behind it. And the reason for that is that we're going to secure that in, fold all of this back, and then we're going to start to create the head. We're going to use the head of the fly to secure that in as well as trap those barbs in a rearward direction. And we don't want to make that too big. Once I have that secured, I can then pop the rest of this right off. I'll flatten my thread. Let me just double check. Always keep thread tension. I want to double check that I have things covered up on both sides. Keeping in mind, I'm going to put some black lacquer on this. I've got some little tidbits of wax, or actually it looks like some of the down off the feather. That's what those light spots in the head are. I'm not concerned about it because a lot of it will get covered up with the whip finish. And then once I put some lacquer on there, a couple of coats, that will cover it up and smooth everything off. As you can see, by tying that collar in this way, I don't have a collar that's sticking out perpendicular, kind of like you'd want a collar on a dry fly, because a dry fly, you would want that collar to help suspend the fly in the surface film. This we don't. We just want it to sweep back to help look like, you know, the head of this bait fish or legs on a nymph or something like that. It's another reason why I chose to this particular neck for this fly because they don't have the full badger in here so it's not totally dark around the head but i do have this little band back here because of the way these feathers are that i think 
uh, looks rather nice. So after my whip finish, I'll put some head cement on both sides. I'll come back in a little bit and put some black lacquer on that and that will complete the Kingfisher. I just thought it was a handsome little fly. It'll be interesting to swing this later on this fall, maybe even in some colder water. It's a fun little wet fly. It's pretty basic and simple. It's a nice one to work on your mallard flank wings if you want, as well as, as I mentioned, work on doing a collar instead of a throat on your wet flies. So that's the Kingfisher. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.